G'day guys, how you going? Bo here from Chasing Dreams. Just wanted to do a video today on battery systems. Full disclosure, we are 100% rookies, just like most people, but we have learned a lot along the way. We've been trialing the two different systems and we're hoping that it's gonna help somebody out there who's planning on touring, whether you're a weekend going away or you're going to do the big lap, Hopefully this information helps you and making the right decision for yourself because I understand is a very big investment and you definitely wanna try and do the best you can and make the right choice. What I'll actually be talking about today is a portable power station and then your typical sort of inbuilt dual battery system within the touring vehicle. With the inbuilt unit, and the portable bank we were actually tossing up when we downgraded from our caravan to the troopy which direction to take with our battery system we ended up actually paying for the inbuilt system two days later blue already reached out and asked if we would like to trial this product and give our honest review and we jumped at it so we could gain that knowledge hopefully help somebody and then in the future we know what's actually better for ourselves and hopefully it helps somebody at home thinking about the exact same thing so that is a product that has been given to us and we are allowed to say whatever we like with full transparency to you guys and give you our honest review alrighty let's introduce the products and get stuck straight into it to my right we have the blue eddy ac 240 unit which is the portable power station right it is dust and water resistant which is super cool especially traveling on the road so we can take it outside in those dusty environments like our campsites half the time and the beach and still be able to enjoy full power in those remote areas away from the vehicle the unit has four AC 240 volt plugs, which is unreal to be able to run those appliances that everybody loves and wants to travel with these days, such as your air fryer, your coffee machine, your induction cooker, your hair dryer, your straightener, all those things you are gonna be able to do because it is paired with a 2,400 watt inverter, all inbuilt, so, all those creature comforts from home are going to be able to come in your setup. It also has two USB-Cs at 100 watts, which is fantastic for fast charging your devices, your phone, and maybe even your laptop if you have the right cord. And also two standard USBs, a 12 volt cigarette socket, and also a 30 amp RV plug. That plug is one that I don't believe we use much here in Australia. I've never seen any product that is sold with that sort of connection so i believe it is more an international product so personally a little bit of a wasted socket as i say with the plug and play i literally mean it from the second you get it out of the box you're going to be able to chuck it on charge with the cord plug it straight into your home 10 amp plug and get it charging fast charging 80 percent in 40 minutes it also comes with a 12 volt charger and my favorite 1200 watts of solar can be put into this unit which i think is absolutely unreal and you're just going to be able to keep this thing off grid fully charged at all times inbuilt is 128 amp hours of lithium in this unit also note they do sell other units and products as well so if that amp hours doesn't sort of suit your needs be sure to check out their website and all their other units as well because they might have what you're looking for. You can also expand the battery power, and I believe just over 800 amp hours is what you can expand it to. So really is a unit that could keep you off grid for a very long time. Now onto the inbuilt unit within the vehicle. We tried to be as plug as play as possible with this. Hence, we went with the iTech World panel, which is completely wired up, has the DC to DC charger and everything built, plus the fuses. As I said before, if we can connect this, so can you. The thing is going this option is there is so many differences that you can get. We went on the budget side of things. So we've gone the iTech panel and then we've also paired that with a Renogy 200 amp hour lithium. It is meant to be this smart battery that's also got a fireproof case around it and also has inbuilt Bluetooth so we can still monitor it. The control panel that we've opted for from iTech World has five switches which you can connect to things like lights and stuff like that. And then you have two 12 volt sockets, a USB standard sockets, and also a USB-C 
fast charging socket. It also came with the options of a 25 or a 40 amp DC to DC charger. We opted for the 40 amp because we knew we were gonna pair that with the alternator charger plus our solar. When we actually brought that package, at the end of the checkout, it came with, did you wanna buy the cables that connect straight to your batteries? He said yes and it also had an alternator charger which is pre-wired that we decided why not it's already got the fuses everything like that so we chucked that in as well and honestly just made things so simple and the alternator charger just means we can get 30 amp hours whilst driving the car which is really awesome for being able to top up our batteries especially in those overcast days with the inbuilt system as well we have an inverter that we already sort of had so we just used our king's 1500 watt inverter which has served its purpose and done really well for us so far and another thing that is really easy to connect to be honest with you that whole system that we chose to go with the instructions that came with the iTech world and the Renergy to pair them both together was super easy super simple just took a few hours and the instructions were very very clear on what to do given that it was already pre-wired for fuses all the lines had fuses where it needed to be and all that sort of thing. So simple bit of kit to do and saved us a lot of money rather than paying someone else to do it. So those are the two setups we have. With anything I do in life, I always like to start with the cons and end it with the pros so we end on a good note. So let's start off with the Blue Eddy cons that we see. Straight off the bat with Blue Eddy, because everything is inbuilt and it's one unit that is plug and play, means it is quite big everything had to fit in somewhere and that is a compromise with that unit when purchasing it you sort of need to look at the connections and take that in mind as to what you want when i say connections i'm meaning your 240 volt plugs your usb c's standard usb's your 12 volts and if you're after an anderson plug because once you purchase it that is it there is no updating or changing that down the track so make sure that when you're doing your research that it has the plugs that you desire moving forward otherwise you might find you'll outgrow it in the future as your setups change and you progress within your touring or camping setup the other disadvantage is wherever this unit sits is wherever your cords need to go so you cannot move your connections to have a certain amount at the back of your vehicle side of your vehicle front of your vehicle so again wherever this sits is where those connections need to be for usage yes you can expand the battery but those batteries become quite heavy and quite large the way they're sort of designed is that they stack on top of each other. So meaning in a touring setup, if you wanted to get that bigger battery bank, that you are going to take up a lot of space and it will really just be one big brick. On to the pros of the Blue Eddy. One thing I do love is seeing that it can charge off 12 volt. Again, if you are on a mission and you've just finished work and you're going to go out camping on a weekend after work or something like that, it's not charged. You can plug it in, get a little bit extra charge on your way to camp and rock up at night and still just have a little bit more juice in your power setup. The fact that it is dust and water resistant in the Australian climate, we are camping in dust, dirt, a heck of a lot or at a beach. So to be able to have it so we can get it out and have it on the ground wherever we are. I believe that is an absolute bonus. The Bluetooth app is a really cool feature. I know everything runs off your phone these days, so it is cool that it still has it because it can do some cool little things like turning on the, the connections, turning it on and off, saving power, and there's a lot of different things you can do within the app, which makes it really cool. My biggest pro for this unit is plug and play. I truly mean that. All the cords come with it. It tells you exactly where to plug it into. All the connections are fitted, wired up. It is just simple to use. Moving on to our inbuilt setup. Again, starting with the cons, ending with the pros. A con with the inbuilt setup is that it is not plug and play, meaning you are gonna have to do your best to try and install it, watch a lot of YouTube, learning and taking hours to do so or you're gonna to have to hire help, which could be very, very expensive. And if they're not willing to work with the cheaper brands like we went with, then potentially it is gonna cost you an exorbitant amount of money just to get the right setup for your vehicle. Research, it took hours of research to try and figure out this whole new lithium battery system with what goes into what and what can connect, and it is very confusing. 
we even learnt something as simple as certain batteries paired with a certain wattage of inverter, they might not be able to run that inverter because it will draw too much from your battery. So simple things like that is quite overwhelming and you have to remember and going back through your brands. And that is just something that gets very complicated, I will be honest, and went over my head a lot of the time. And hence we try to keep it as basic as possible in the end. Moving on to the pros for the inbuilt system. You can easily expand the batteries. I don't understand if there is a limitation on that because we didn't look at going to extreme, but adding extra batteries is a lot more simple and easier than it looks. It is just a matter of having that space and breathability within your unit. To be able to put the connections anywhere you like makes it so easy and simple. As you evolve and move around, you learn your setup better, learn what works better for you, and who's not to say that you would like some plugs right at the end of your setup for USBs or things like that to be able to charge your phone while you're sitting at the back of the car, or better yet, at the front of the car. You can put them anywhere you like and it is easy to expand on. If you want to add another fridge, you just put in another connection for it and then voila, you're running another fridge. The ability to be able to do things like that just makes it sort of a one-stop shop in that regard rather than having to worry about have I got enough connections. The ability to mix and match products when doing the inbuilt system is really good as well. So whether there's a product that can do a certain thing that you like, but the brand of battery that you're going to buy doesn't do that, you can still mix and match and intertwine and do all these different things so you get the features that you desire. Okay guys, our overall thoughts, what path would we go if we were to redo it again and just have the one system? Personally, with the Blue Eddy, I'd like to see some other connections maybe thought about. In Australia, we use an Anderson plug a lot for our fridges and the likes of that. If you don't know, the reason that we do switch it over to an Anderson plug rather than a 12 volt is because they actually fall out. If you go on a corrugated road and things like that, the chances of that plug falling out and all your food being wasted is quite high compared to an Anderson plug connection, which is very, very sturdy and stable. And the Anderson plug can also put more amperage into your system, meaning that it will stay cooler and run more efficiently. That's probably my biggest gripe with it is it's just its connections they have to be in one spot. You have to build your whole system around where it's going to sit and then have like a charging station right with it. With this unit personally as well, I would like to see a wireless charging system up on top. I know they do do it. It is on other ones. I'd just like to see it on the unit that we have. The inbuilt system. Honestly, I know it takes a lot of knowledge and research to decide on what you're going to go with but it's the path that I absolutely love because the possibilities are endless. You can do so much with it, pair it with so much. And as you adapt and evolve within your camping and touring setup, that system can with you as well. The fact that say you wanna run more with an inverter down the track, you are gonna be able to upgrade it. And if you go a unit like us, it is still reasonably simple to plug and play. Honestly, I really reckon anyone will be able to give that a go. So in conclusion, the inbuilt system is what I would personally stick with. I think that just your options to be able to do whatever you want, build and adapt, whilst you grow within your touring setup is just the best way to go. But if you're somebody who's bouncing around and doing different things, having a Blue Eddy or a power bank system is really going to be a game changer for you because you're going to be able to use it at home, use it at your shack, use it at the beach and use it in your car. The possibilities are endless with that. And to be 100% honest, I actually think we would like to get a smaller system and potentially put it in our center console that we currently have as a fridge. The fridge is turned off, but if I could just get another one that maybe is like 100 amp hours, sit it in the middle, Maddie can charge her laptop and phones whilst we're driving and stuff, I think that would help us out a fair bit. One thing to also note and to think about is like we went 200 amp hours in our setup thinking that that would be enough because of we already had in the caravan 200 amp hours of AGM. So with lithium, we technically have more, but we are outgrowing that. With our setup, we've changed, we've tried induction, we've got an air fryer now, 
I know, tell me about it. And that's exactly what I mean by able to adapt and expand your setup. So we personally think even in this little setup that we have now, because we run Starlink air fryers, we're charging our camera gear and all the equipment all the time, we think that we'd like to head up to about that 400 amp hours inbuilt within our system. So keep that sort of stuff in mind as you go and think about what you're gonna put in your caravan or car because the possibilities are endless these days. We literally don't have to leave anything at home. So what are you gonna choose? Are you gonna choose the battery bank that is gonna be transportable, take anywhere? It is plug and play. Anybody can do it, anybody can use it, and you're off and racing, set up within seconds. Or are you going the other option, doing that research, trying to find the products that suit yourself or spending those big dollars just to get it done right? Let us know your thoughts. If we've missed anything, again, get that community sharing information so everybody can make the right decision for themselves. I hope you are out there chasing your dreams, doing whatever makes you happy. We would love to run into you sometime on the tracks or out here in this beautiful country we get to explore. Thank you for being a part of this journey. Thank you for supporting our channel. It has been unreal and we can't do it without you. You are an absolute bloody legend. We'll catch you next week, wherever that may be. See ya!